What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment, here with another in-depth character spotlight video for The Walking Dead. In this video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth character analysis for what is probably the most requested character spotlight I've gotten, Abraham Ford. I'm going to be going through Abraham's entire run in the comic book series. This is going to mainly focus on comic Abraham, but throughout the video I will be talking about the TV series Abraham and how they've done things differently, how they've kept certain things the same, stuff like that. This video will of course contain spoilers for Abraham's entire run in the comic book series. Abraham is introduced in issue number 53 of the Walking Dead comic book series. After the governor's brutal prison attacks destroyed the entire fabric of what was going on at the moment, Rick and Carl have eventually reconnected with their group and regrouped at Herschel's farm. Rick is woken up by a warning shot fired off by Andrea, and we see Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene for the first time. They've approached the farm in a very straightforward manner, but they are carrying very heavy weaponry, and after the governor, nobody's taking any chances. Andrea and Rick keep them at gunpoint until two zombies stumble into Herschel's farm. Glenn panics and reaches for Abraham's gun. Abraham tells him to back up and he easily dispatches the two zombies by himself. This is the first time we see Abraham fight and that's something that becomes very common during his run in the comic books. He's one of the most dangerous people that they have. And after Tyrese was beheaded by the governor, they've had a severe power vacuum in the role of right-hand man to Rick. If you've watched my character spotlight on Tyrese, you know that he was a lot more important of a character in the comic books than he was in the TV series. He was Rick's best friend, his right-hand man, and the surrogate leader when Rick wasn't able to be. Right after Shane died in the comics, Tyrese was introduced as this strong secondary hero figure to Rick. That's what's happening here with Abraham. It's right after Tyrese died in the comic book series. That role in the group has to be filled, and Abraham is the person that does it. So Abraham and Eugene instantly start criticizing the group for being so willing to use firearms in a stationary camp. They talk about how the noise will draw zombies from the surrounding area, and mention what a herd is. Abraham then introduces himself, Rosita, and Eugene, and tells the group about his mission to take Eugene to Washington, D.C. to cure the zombie apocalypse. Eugene does his whole spiel claiming to be a scientist, claiming to know what caused the zombie outbreak. Andrea gets really pissed and right as Rick starts to ask what a herd is, she shoves a gun in Eugene's face demanding answers. Abraham pulls a slick move, grabs Andrea's gun, hits her in the face with it, and fires it off, saying that he'll answer Rick's question first because he didn't shove a gun in people's face. What is a herd? Abraham then schools the group on what a zombie herd is, going into a big explanation. One zombie happens to walk past another one, starts following them, maybe they hear a noise and start walking in the same direction, maybe that group brushes against another group, and after a while you've got hundreds and thousands of these things all walking in the same direction. They're walking because everyone else is walking, and everyone else is walking because they're walking. They're stupid as fuck. These things have almost become zombie storms in a way. They're kind of a force of nature. They just exist in the world now. It's a natural progression of what happens with zombies. Next, he gets to Andrea's question as to what's going on with the zombie apocalypse to Eugene. He calls her Little Miss Death Threat, which is funny. And basically, it's classified. Yeah, Eugene hasn't told Abraham what's going on, hasn't told Rosita what's going on, but they do believe him because he's proven several times to to be a lot smarter than them. He knows how to make things, he knows how to use basic scientific principles to create useful things or to treat injuries or things like that. So he's basically proven himself to be smart enough that Abraham considers his story viable. This is also where we get one of Abraham's more memorable lines from his early appearance in the comic book series. The thing about smart motherfuckers is that sometimes they sound like crazy motherfuckers to stupid motherfuckers. I hope you guys aren't a bunch of stupid motherfuckers. After basically being told that they have no idea what they're doing, Dale and the rest of the group are offended. He fires back. He's like, you don't know what we've been through, man. They just came out of the shit with the governor. Abraham fires right back at him. He's like, look, fuckface, I had an eight-year-old boy, a six-year-old girl, and an ex-wife that couldn't stand me, but truth be told, I still kind of loved her. So he lost his family, and I'll get into the backstory of that when he actually reveals it to Rick later on in the story. Rosita manages to get Abraham to calm down a little bit. He's basically really riled up because he's a really straightforward guy. When he 
hears that there's a mission, that they need to solve a problem, they need to go to Washington, D.C., you know, he's right on, he's ready to go, like right then, and he expects everybody else to be the same way, so he's very impatient, and his external anger isn't really his real personality, we'll get more into that later. So they decide to let them sleep there overnight, compare notes a little bit, maybe help them out with supplies, and talk more the next day. The next morning, Abraham comes up to Andrea and apologizes for hitting her with the gun. Andrea asks what his deal is, and he explains the basic idea that when he was broken down, when his life no longer had meaning, Eugene came along and gave him a purpose, presented him a problem that he could help solve. Their conversation is interrupted by multiple zombies approaching them. Abraham picks up a pitchfork, tells Andrea to get the rest of the group, and goes to work. This fight is ridiculous. He is just destroying these zombies. This is the kind of thing that we haven't seen since Tyrese's epic scene with the hammer in the gym of the prison. I mean, if you haven't seen my Tyrese character spotlight, or if you haven't read the Walking Dead comic book series, I really suggest you go take that video out. This is the kind of thing that Tyrese did a lot. Just ridiculous feats of awesomeness killing zombies. So he's just hacking these things to pieces with the pitchfork and the knife and his bare hands and his boots. The rest of the group shows back up and Abraham's like, no, I got this. Because this isn't just a fight, this is a demonstration. Now that he's gotten the group's attention, he starts to make his point. This is just the beginning. He's like, remember when you get lost in the woods back in the normal world and they tell you to stay in one place so that people can find you? Well, now being found is dangerous. You get found by a big enough herd of zombies and they'll rip through your entire camp like a tornado, like a tsunami. You'll never be able to defend against it. You get found by enough people, you know, who want your place. If your place is good enough, you're fucking done. And we get to see Rick and Dale talking about this later. Dale definitely agrees with Abraham. He's like, he makes a good argument. And Rick agrees too. Rick doesn't want to make any of the decisions right now. So they end up all deciding to pack up and go with Abraham. They load up into the truck and get on the road to DC. At this point, Maggie's mental state has been deteriorating after the loss of her entire family. She attempts to kill herself by hanging herself on a tree. Abraham is one of the people that helps get her down. And when Glenn is knelt over her asking what to do, Abraham tells him you know what you have to do. And he wants to go ahead and kill Maggie before she reanimates. He sees it as she's already gone, you know, don't take any time, just do it. This is when Abraham and Glenn have their fight in the comics. They had a version of this in the show at a very different juncture, but, you know, it's definitely central to their characters. Glenn is one of the people that Abraham interacts with the most. They have their up and down moments, you know, right now is obviously the worst of it, but they definitely become friends and interact a lot throughout the entire series. Rick puts a gun to Abraham's head. This is the beginning of a long confrontation between them. Uh, he basically has a standoff with Abraham, and Maggie has enough time to wake back up. She was not dead, you know, and Glenn is just, like, freaking out because Abraham had just tried to kill her. Abraham knows he was wrong, but later on approaches Rick, tells him if he ever puts a gun to his head again, he'll fucking kill him. Rick tells him, next time you make me put a gun to your head, I will fucking kill you, asshole and walks off. Later on, Rick is entangled with a zombie, and Abraham has the zombie in his sights, but waits a minute just to kind of make a point. And after he kills it, says, you should be more careful, friend. It's dangerous out here. With his straight up, I do not give a fuck look on his face. This is kind of a struggle back and forth with Rick. They're kind of just butting heads. You know, their testosterone is high and their leadership qualities are high and they're kind of clashing with each other. Later on, Rosita comes up to Abraham and this is the first time we get a real hint that Abraham's machismo is largely an act. He's a lot more sensitive than he lets on. Underneath it all, he's really just a big softy. He's worried that maybe he was pointing the gun at Rick instead of the zombie. He's worried about maybe killing another human being. And he's definitely referring to what he did to the people who raped and endangered his family. Rosita tells him that it's not his fault. He didn't have a choice in that situation. And we really get to see how meaningful she is to him. There's a lot of complicated stuff that goes on in their relationship in the future. But Rosita is the best. She is his rock. She's there for him. She's his center. And she keeps him going. She understands Abraham in a way that nobody else in the entire group ever does. 
and for a long time, he really needs her. When Abraham and Rick are discussing which direction to take to go to Washington, D.C., Rick wants to stop by the town he was from to go to the police station and take all of the guns out of the armory. You remember in season one, I think episode one, Rick and Morgan did that in the show. In the comics, they never went by the police station, and this is when that finally happens. Abraham again takes it upon himself to make the call, declares that the group is going to set up camp right here for the night, and that Rick, himself, and Carl are going to travel by themselves up to the police station. When they find a place to camp for the night, Abraham is taking second watch, Rick and Carl are asleep, and they are approached by the Marauders. We saw the Marauders in the show, and they had kind of a longer history with Rick. He was in that house with them, and then they approached him in the forest. They had that whole thing with Daryl, Michonne, all of that. But in the comics, it was just Rick, Abraham, and Carl during this scene. Abraham immediately has a gun pushed up in his face, and he calmly turns to the guy holding it and says he's going to kill every goddamn one of them. Rick fights back, and after getting beat down, watches as the Marauders hold Carl down and threaten to rape him. This is kind of an extreme level of darkness for the comic books. I mean, this scene was fucked up. We had so much horrible shit go on with the governor, but... I mean, with involving a kid into that kind of stuff, this was so fucking dark. This was actually one of the scenes in the show that played out almost exactly the same as the comics, other than the fact that Abraham being there was replaced with Daryl and Michonne. When Rick gets wrapped up by that guy, he's only got one hand, so it makes a lot more sense that the guy just kind of wraps him up in a bear hug. Rick just leans in and rips the guy's throat out with his teeth in one of the most brutal moments of the entire comic book series from start to finish. This is all Abraham needs. He shoves his assault rifle into the guy's face and blows his fucking head off. Tells the third guy to let Carl go. Rick, now with blood all over his face, says that he's mine and chases the pleading marauder down before completely eviscerating him with his knife as Carl watches. The next morning, Rick and Abraham are sitting there with Carl asleep in Rick's lap in front of their car. A similar scene happened in the show between Rick and Daryl, but this conversation is a lot more meaningful and really without it in the show left us without any kind of deep connection between Abraham and Rick. This is the point where Abraham breaks down and cries in front of Rick and tells him how he lost his family. When everything started, Abraham found his ex-wife and his children and they banded together with a group of survivors that stayed together in a grocery store. One day when Abraham was out on a supply run, the group raped his wife and daughter and forced his young son to watch. When Abraham came back, he ripped these people apart like an animal, took body parts from them, just eviscerated the hell out of them, really similarly to a lot of the things Rick is forced to do. The things he did scared his family enough that they left in the middle of the night. The next morning, Abraham woke up and found them outside eaten by zombies. He ended up having to put his daughter daughter down. Rick tells Abraham about killing Dexter in cold blood and taking out Martinez and beating him to death during the governor arc. They really connect over this. I mean, these are the things that you have to do. I've done a whole video on this topic called why Shane was right in the TV series and why Rick is right as well once he gets to that point. Abraham and him really connect over doing whatever it takes to keep themselves and their family and the people around them alive. Carl ends up waking up as well and joining into this conversation, talking about the moment he shot Shane in the neck. See, in the comic books, Carl shot Shane when he was still alive, when he was about to attack Rick, and Rick came back later and killed him as a zombie. Carl tells Rick that last night when Rick eviscerated the Marauder that he wanted Rick to do it, that he looked and that he wanted to help. You know, this is a really dark moment where Rick realizes how much trauma his son's actually gone through, and this is a big moment that shapes Carl's character for the rest of the storyline as well. So after this horrible ordeal with the Marauders, Rick, Abraham, and Carl press on and go back to Rick's old neighborhood where he is knocked out by a shovel, similarly to how he was in the very first issue. The first thing Rick thinks is that Dwayne maybe hit him again without recognizing him, but this time it's Morgan standing over him with a ripped shirt, longer hair, and a beard, and a crazed look on his face. Abraham pulls a gun out, tells him to calm down, and Morgan stands down as he realizes who this is. 
Morgan takes Rick into the house and we find out that Morgan has been keeping his zombified son chained up inside the house and he's been killing and feeding travelers to the undead Dwayne. This is so fucked up and Rick just wants to help Morgan. He gives him the gun, tells him to kill the zombified version of his son, that he's not alive. He goes outside with Abraham, tells him that Morgan is coming along with them. Abraham is like, do you really want to take this guy? He tried to kill you and feed you to his zombie son. They hear a gunshot and Morgan comes out with a smoking gun. Rick tells Abraham that he's coming with them again, that he's no different than they are and that he's done terrible things for the ones he loves. And we see that Morgan did not kill Dwayne. He shot his chain, setting him free and leaving him roaming the world as a zombie. So they finally make their way to the police station and get the bag of guns. This is one of the things in the show that happened completely out of sequential order. Think how early that happened in what, the first episode? And it's taken them all this time to finally make it back to the police station and get these guns. So Abraham's with him, they load up the guns, get back in the car, and as they come up on this hill, they see the biggest herd of zombies that they've ever seen before. I mean, this is like hundreds, if not thousands of them. They have no time to even turn the wheel. Abraham tells them to drive as fast as he can, and suddenly they're just bowling into the giant mass of bodies. Abraham is thrown from the car, and the car is just totaled. Rick, Carl, and Morgan scramble to get on their feet and get away from these zombies. Abraham, already back on his feet, holding the bag of guns, saves Morgan's life, scoops Carl up onto his shoulders, and they start hightailing it out of there. Rick says to hold on and that they can't keep running in that direction because they're leading the zombie herd straight back to their group. And it actually is Carl's quick thinking that gives them a plan good enough to get ahead of these zombies. They go into an abandoned shack. Abraham comes up and just kicks the door in. And after using all of the battery-powered items in the house to create the best distraction they could, they get ahead enough of the zombies to make it back to their group, gather everybody up, and just get the hell out of there. Later on on the road... Two young children, Ben and Billy, are involved in one of the darker storylines. After being adopted by Andrea and Dale after their parents had died, Ben ends up killing his brother Billy in the same way that Lizzie killed her sister Mika in the show. That was what was going on in the show. In the comics, Ben showed all of the psychopathic tendencies that Lizzie did in the show. And after he killed his brother, they know they have to do something about it. Abraham is the first person to step up and say that they need to kill the kid. They have to do it because they don't have some special mental hospital that they can send this kid to to give him all this therapy that he would need to somehow, you know, get over his psychopathic killing tendencies. Like something's just wrong in the kid's head. And eventually even Rick kind of acquiesced to it. We see Carl angrily looking forward and totally focused after the conversation that him and Rick and Abraham had after killing the Marauders, Carl takes it upon himself to go in and kill Ben. Later on, we see Abraham and Rosita hooking up in the back of the truck, and we see them have a similar conversation that they did in the show, where they know that Eugene's been watching them. It's just kind of an unspoken agreement that he's a creeper and that he's not hurting anything by doing it. So Abraham's like, he's watching again. Rosita's like, I hope Glenn catches him. That'd be hilarious. So it's kind of funny that they don't care. I mean, it's very, very creepery that he's out there just staring at them, though. Later on, when Dale is taken by the hunters and Andrea has suspicions that another group may be tracking them down, Abraham says that they can handle whatever's coming on. And when Andrea is praying at Father Gabriel's church in a desperate attempt to do anything to make herself feel better about Dale being gone, He says to Rick that it's stupid that she's doing it and that they're not going to find Dale and that they need to just move on. He definitely just pisses off Rick. He's like, come on, man, leave her alone. Quit being a dick. Abraham didn't mean anything by it. He just wanted to make sure that they were going to keep on the road, that they were going to keep moving and stay on the mission. But he always kind of manages to say the wrong things and piss people off in heated situations. When Dale is dropped back in front of the church and Glenn is shot in the leg, by the hunters hiding off in the distance, Abraham shows himself really adept at understanding strategy, understanding what people's motivations are, at least in a battle sense. 
he knows that since they only fired one shot that only hit Glenn in the leg, if they were trying to kill the group, if they thought that they could just overpower the group, they would have just come out and done it. But they didn't, so they know that the Hunters are toying with them, and this is when Rick delivers that awesome line. It was very, very messed up in the show because they couldn't say fuck, but when they were in the train car at the very, very beginning, or the very end of season four, I believe, Rick goes, they're gonna feel pretty stupid when they find out. Abraham's like, find out what? They're fucking with the wrong people. And God, they changed it to screwing. Ugh, ugh, it sounded so bad. It just, there was a cognitive dissonance in my mind when I heard him say screwing instead of fucking, that I just kind of cringed a little bit. But this is an awesome moment. Abraham is also the first person who notices that what they want are pieces of the group. They're like, maybe the answer to what they want lies in what they already took, and points to Dale's chopped off leg. Rick decides to go straight after the hunters, and after figuring out where their camp is, they approach them, and Abraham walks up and takes all of their guns as Rick has Andrea just off in the distance, shooting fingers off of people, just shooting individual ears off of people and fingers. Just at Rick's mark, he makes a little gun with his hand and just goes, bang, watch this. And people's fingers and ears are just flying off. Like, this is awesome. Andrea is the ultimate sharpshooter, so it just seems like they probably have an army out there with sniper rifles. The hunters have now become the hunted, and Abraham, along with the rest of the group, rips them apart, eviscerating them, ripping them limb from limb, bashing in their skulls, breaking their bones, and creating a ripple effect within the survivors' psyches that will last for the entire series. Afterwards, Rick thinks that Abraham has approached him to speak to him, to comfort him about it. He explains how every bit of it is haunting him, how Carl wouldn't love him or be able to look at him anymore if he knew what they had done, and then he realizes that it's not Abraham behind him, but Carl who is breaking down into tears and tells Rick that he killed Ben. Rick, broken down by the knowledge of what his son has had to go through, listens as Carl tells him that it was because of the conversation that Abraham and him had after the Marauders. Carl agreed with everything they said. He knew that Ben was dangerous and that he wasn't gonna tell anybody about it. He was gonna take that burden on himself because he knew that none of the adults could kill a kid. Like, they couldn't go through that. In the show, Carol did it, and God, props to her for surviving and keeping her mental state afterwards. But in the comics, Carl took that responsibility on himself to protect the group, to do what was right, to do what only he could do. Like, Carl in the comics is not a bad character. A lot of people don't like him in the show. But in the comics, Carl is the zombie apocalypse. Carl has reacted to everything that he's seen and grown up around in this time, and this was the most Rick thing that Carl has done up to this point. Carl tells Rick that he's strong enough to go on with the knowledge that he killed Ben, and that he just wants Rick to know that he loves him because of what Rick does to keep everybody safe. He knows why Rick does what he does, he agrees with it, he wants to be part of it, to protect the weak, to protect their group and their family, and to survive together. So it may seem weird that I'm finishing up part one of my Abraham character spotlight talking about Carl and Rick, but Abraham was instrumental in this point in Carl's development, and people like him, people like Shane in the TV series, people like Rick are the people that are necessary for other people to survive. They're the people that are gonna come out on top and protect the ones they care about at all costs. So I think that's really important to Abraham's character as well. That's something he brings to the series, and this is a good stopping point, because Abraham goes on far longer in the comic book series. He's got so many big moments, and really all of the best parts of his character have yet to come. So seeing as this video is already as long as my Tyrese character spotlight and my Axel character spotlight, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this Abraham character spotlight. Yeah.